I have been spending so much time benchmarking new products recently, uh, mainly CPUs and graphics cards that have launched in the past couple months, and I haven't actually built a computer with the new hardware. So that's what I'm doing today. This is the monthly build for November 2020. Excellent! World of Tanks PC is a free-to-play, team-based MMO action game dedicated to mid-20th century armored tank combat. Access a huge arsenal of over 550 tanks, then challenge your opponents in one of more than 40 battle arenas, with environments ranging from harsh deserts to urban industrial zones. Whether you appreciate the authentic models and vehicular combat, the thrill of devising a battle plan to rally your teammates around, or if you've just always wanted to be a tank commander taking part in a furious armored offensive, World of Tanks has something for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and use invite code TANKTASTIC for sign-up bonuses for new players, including 500 gold and seven days of premium access. So this is the build that I parted out at the beginning of this month. It's the $2,000 build when it comes to the core components of the CPU, which is a 5900X, and the graphics card, which is an RTX 3080, which should cost $700 and $550 respectively. Of course, right out of the gate, I have to acknowledge that those core components are very difficult to find right now. So scooping those up at retail for their list prices might be a challenge for you. That said, that's all I'm gonna really mention when it comes to availability for these parts for this video. I think I've gone over that plenty in recent videos and the intent of this build isn't to sell it to anyone, uh, it's to give it away. Hero's down there napping if you guys hear any breathing in the background, but uh, yes, giving this system away is the plan. Oh, I'm tripping over stuff. But a couple notes on that. One is that uh, if you're looking at some of the components that I have here, you'll, you might note that some are swapped out from the $2,000 build. So if you want a $2,000 version of this build, check out the video's description for all the parts I would recommend for that. There are some changes such as the memory kit and the SSD. I have a nice set of fractal stuff with the case, the cooler, and the power supply, but uh, for the best bargains and the best bang for your buck, you probably want to go with a few alternative components. That said, I think for whoever might win this system in a giveaway, uh, they won't care at all about how much things might cost when it comes to the retail price. The only thing I will say there is that I'm still trying to confirm the CPU because this is a Ryzen 9 5900X. This is my sample directly from AMD that they sent me that I'm building with today, and the intent is to use a 5900X in this system. However, I need to still have a 5900X available to me. So the worst case scenario is that I will swap in the 5800X for the purposes of the giveaway, um, because this is the one I've actually been using for comparative testing, and I know I'm gonna have pretty immediate need of it pretty soon again, so uh, that's why I can't really be without 5900X. What else to say about it, though? Uh, 5900X, 12 cores, 24 threads, and this is kind of a no compromises gaming PC. These components will give you pretty much the best gaming experience possible right now, outside of just a couple minor tweaks, like the RTX 3090, yes, is maybe about 10 to 15% faster than the 3080 when it comes to gaming performance, but it also is 15 dollars versus seven hundred dollars the 5900x will give you the best gaming experience when paired with this graphics card of course but if you can't find a 3080 in stock then you might of course also keep an eye out for the radeon rx 6800 xt check out my review on this card for a little bit more but there should be some third-party variations of this coming out as well and uh, given how difficult it is to find graphics cards in general if you're trying to decide between an rtx 3080 and a 6800 xt um, just going with whichever one you can actually find and purchase is probably Probably the best bet at this point. That said, the variation of the RTX 3080 that I'm building with today is the ASUS Tough Gaming version, which has been pretty widely praised. It's a good model. It performs just as well, if not better, than the Founders Edition of the RTX 3080. And it should match up nicely with our Tough Gaming motherboard, since these are both Tough Series products from ASUS. Also, uh, if you're paying attention, we got some ASUS products, Fractal products, some Corsair stuff, and then I guess AMD and Nvidia rounded out. Now, in the builds parts list, I might have a B550 motherboard list down there. The X570 variant of this particular Tough Series motherboard from Asus uh, has a particular feature that I want to match up with the case, which is a front USB Type-C connector, that, that specific port right there. Other than that, it's a nice full-featured, well-rounded board, and it costs about $220. That said, if you don't need expanded PCIe 4.0 connectivity through stuff that uh, connects through the chipset, you can save maybe $30 to $40 by going with a B550 variant, and you won't be sacrificing anything in terms of CPU performance or overclocking or anything like that. Down here, we have a couple Corsair products. We have their Force Series MP600, which is a PCIe 4.0 SSD. Again, this is something that you don't really need. You don't need the Gen 4 SSDs. The ones I've recommended down in the description are a little bit slower than this when it comes to throughput, like reads and write speeds. But for gaming, sequential reads and write speeds, again, don't really matter very much. It might, you know, shave a second or two off of a game load time, for example. But the point I'm trying to get at is that uh, you don't need to spend as much as this costs in order to get yourself the maximum gaming performance out of this system. 
That said, it's a very fast drive, and again, since the system is intended to be given away, uh, I don't think anyone will complain. Same story goes here for the memory. This is Dominator Platinum RGB, a 32 gig kit of Dominator Platinum RGB, and I'm including this because it's pretty. It's actually very pretty and nice looking memory, so I think it's gonna look very good in the build. It is DDR4 3000 speed, and I would uh, point you towards DDR4 3600 if you're building an AMD Ryzen system like the one I'm putting together today. And the memory I have linked in the description should be 3600 speed memory. For the purposes of the giveaway, I'm going to see if I can uh, overcrank this a little bit and run it at 3600 speed because uh, the Dominator Platinum memory does have very good uh, memory chips. Typically, it's the highest end kits that uh, Corsair puts out. This is also a cast latency 15 kit, so I have a feeling I can run this at 3600 with maybe at maybe CL18 or something like that. But depending how things go, this might just be looking pretty for the build, and then I might swap it out when I actually do the giveaway. And now the Fractal stuff, and a huge, huge thank you to Fractal for getting me this stuff in very short notice. This is the Meshify 2, uh, which has a really nice mesh front panel for really, really nice airflow. This case has already been reviewed by a few reputable sources and it's gotten very high marks, so I have no qualms about including it when it comes to performance for airflow, especially for a higher end build like this. It's gonna run you about $140 for the uh, standard Meshify 2 version. There's also an XL that they're coming out with as well that's a little bit larger, but didn't wanna go overboard for that. This is the black version with the dark tinted tempered glass. There are a few different variants in uh, different colors and finishes. If you're interested, you can check the link in the description. But this should match up and pair very nicely with our power supply, which is the Fractal Ion 760p. 760 watt, 80 plus platinum, fully modular, nice flat, all black cables. So a really nice set of features for a power supply here. And 760 watts is plenty for our RTX 3080, which is recommended a 750 watt unit. And finally, we need a cooler for our CPU. It does not ship with one. So you, you have to have one in some variety. And if you have a high end Ryzen CPU like the 5900X with features like uh, auto OC and you wanna get the most out of it, pairing it up with an all-in-one liquid cooler is actually a pretty good bet. The Celsius Plus S36 Prisma here, as you can see, has some RGB fans across the front, some more RGB on the pump there at the center, so uh, we'll get this out of the box in just a second and take a closer look at it. So that's what I'm building with today, and again, if you'd like to see a $2,000-ish dollar version of this build, check the video's description for links to all that. I'll put, put links to the stuff I'm actually building with today as well. I am super excited to get this thing put together, uh, despite Hero still being asleep and snoring down here next to me, but uh, let's get started. Look at this accessory box. This thing is huge. It's like, it's like as big as one of the case side panels. That's, that's a little crazy. Okay. User's guide. Accessories include four of these uh, metal brackets for 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives, as well as, of course, a kit with a baggie of screws and zip ties and uh, other useful accessories and a uh, very clutch wipey cloth. Let's take a closer look at the case. First, uh, how did the side panels come off? It's just like a little finger nub spot right here. You just kind of push out on that like that. Side panel tilts out. You can lift it off and set it down. Got some metal strips along here, which I appreciate. Uh, I, I, if you're gonna have a tempered glass side panel, I would prefer that the interaction with the rest of the case happens with metal brackets rather than holes through the side of the panel. Just personal preference, but you can see these little nubs here that uh, sort of stick into these little points here along the top edge of the case, and that's what holds it in place, which makes it fairly easy to pop off. Rear side panel. Works in the same way. Here's the rear side of the case. As you can see, Fractal always uh, pays a good amount of attention to cable management. So you've got these little, uh, you know, tie down points with some Velcro straps. That's been pretty standard for quite some time. Grommeted pass-throughs. I feel like some of the cases uh, that have been coming out have been skipping the grommets to save on cost. And you can get away with that, but uh, there's something about just, just having these nice rubberized pass-through points that uh, is just a little bit nicer. There's a pretty basic fan hub integrated. Uh, you can control this fan hub by connecting it to your motherboard and using your motherboard control, but uh, it has connection points for four PWM and six DC controlled fans. If there is a complaint in some of the uh, videos I watched, and by the way, Gamers Nexus has a review of this case, and I believe Kyle also did a build in it, but it's about this little panel right here. It's a plastic panel. It folds down. It again just sort of pops on with these little nubs right here. It's meant to hide the power supply basement down there and I guess provide a little bit of cover for your cables, but uh, you have to feed the cables through that and um, you know, might as well just remove it if you don't like it. Oh look, more accessories. Oh, 
I do not believe this is something that ships with the case. I think this is an added accessory, which is the vertical riser bracket, uh, which allows you to do a vertically mounted GPU. I'm not intending to do that today, so I'm not gonna use this, but um, here it is and it exists. Other than that, back here you have this bracket, which is uh, either a 2.5 inch mount or a 3.5 inch mount, or it can also work as a pump mount and you can flip it around to the other side. A couple of these little 2.5 inch trays back here for 2.5 inch SSDs. There's a basement area down in the bottom for a couple of 3.5 inch drives if you so desire. And of course, plenty of room for a decent length power supply, as well as room down there to tuck away unused cables. Here's the rear of the case. Uh, not too much to say back here, but you can see the vertical slots there for a vertically mounted GPU, which are spaced in a little bit away from what would be the tempered glass side panel, which should provide a little bit more of airflow if you do go with a vertical mount there. Just bear in mind, if you're going with a wider, like a three-ish slot card, that's probably not gonna be the best solution to mount right there. Power supply has a bracket uh, that you can unscrew and mount to the power supply and then mount that through. And then here's the main chamber of the case, a pretty standard ATX layout with the power supply basement down at the bottom, uh, with again, some of this sort of a uh, little bit more uniquely designed fractal mesh design. I'd say that's a pretty cool looking, somewhat unique design there for uh, airflow from the power supply ba basement up to the top. And that design aesthetic is continued for the rear removable brackets. You do get three nice all black fractal 140 millimeter fans pre-installed in the case, two in the front for uh, intake and one in the back for exhaust. I'm gonna leave those just as is because I'm planning to mount my 360 radiator uh, all in one liquid cooler at the top. And then that should provide uh, some RGB lighting that, that sort of bathes the rest of the system in a nice RGB glow, which of course is gonna add some frames per second. This is a cover right here for this panel. You can remove that and then you can get extra like hard drive cages and stuff to add there. You can actually fit a bunch of drive cages into this case. However, you do need to buy those actual brackets separately directly from Fractal. So I suppose that's nice as an option for people, um, but for a lot of people who aren't going to be dropping in a bunch of uh, drives, it's nice to have that sort of clean panel to cover things up. Here's the meshy part of the Meshify 2 and a uh, Fractal logo down here. Ooh, let's, let's peel that off right quick. And I guess this also functions as a handle, so you can open up this front panel to get at uh, the dust filter that's behind it. This removes, right, somehow. Oh yeah. This is just held on with some plastic hinges, so you can remove it without too much difficulty and uh, also hopefully replace it. Can I do that with one hand? No, no I can't. Yeah, not too bad to get on and off, just, uh, just use two hands. It looks like we're gonna get a bit of lighting right here once we have everything installed and hooked up. And then for IO up here on top, you got a couple USB 3.0 power and reset, and then you've got that type C for a USB 3.2 gen two, which is a very nice port to have if you do a lot of external copying off of uh, say fast SSDs. Of course, you need to be able to plug that in internally, which is why I chose the motherboard that I chose because it has that port or that connector, I guess I should say. Last part to mention, I guess would be the top here, which also you just sort of pull on and it sort of pops up just like that. That allows you to remove it easily to clean out that uh, mesh at the top. And then a secondary dust filter is right there and you just pull that back from the back and that pops off for cleaning as well. Finally, this whole uh, bracket on top, which can support a variety of radiators with 120 or 140 millimeter fans is also removable. It's currently held on by a couple screws, but once I get to the radiator installation process, uh, I'll do that too. So the build has been going quite smoothly so far, a knock on wood, and I have the motherboard installed and I've gone ahead and connected pretty much all my front panel connectors wherever those are necessary. Got that 3.2 Gen 2 one connected. Uh, the USB 3.0 connector on this case has a pretty flat cable for that plug, so it wasn't too horrible there either. Unfortunate splash of color on the HD audio cables, but those have been standard for quite some time, so we'll just live with it. And front panel connectors are set up right there. This is kind of the order I've been building in recently when I've done a uh, build, so all that's left is the power supply and getting power supply cables connected up to the motherboard. The CPU cooler, of course, which is going to be mounted across here for the radiator and then the uh, block and pump is going to mount directly here. It does use the built-in bracket for the AM4 mount, so I just left that on and it has this little bracket that goes around the outside. One end sort of hooks around the catch and then the other end has a screw with a little catch that you have to 
hook around it. The most recent build that I did in a, the Corsair 4000 series case, I complained a little bit about the mounting method that they have and that it used these AM4 brackets. We'll see if Fractal's design is any easier, but I'm gonna try to be a little bit smarter about it this time and, and leave it lying flat on the uh, table like it is now for this install. Oh, and then of course the final step as always will be the graphics card. So as is often the case with builds like this, uh, it's been fairly simple up until the point where we started to add RGB and an all-in-one liquid cooler, and this is kind of both things combined. Now to be fair, in my experience, there is no like good solution for RGB. You're trying to connect up a bunch of different things with colored lights in a specific order and connect them up to a motherboard, and you might have different ways of controlling it. For Fractal Celsius, each of these three fans has two cables coming off of it. One is a standard four pin PWM connector, and you're supposed to route all of those over here. So you've got all three fans hub kind of built in right there which is convenient so you just need to run the cables along the back side here where they hopefully won't be showing up and around there and plug them in but then we have rgb as well so each of these has another cable coming off of it with a little daisy chain unit and those each have a male and a female these little three pin uh, five volt addressable rgb headers which uh, you plug directly into the motherboard but this little nest of cables here is those all daisy chained together and then just sort of twist tied around and i'm hoping that this corner here is going to tuck up there in the top right hand corner of the case and hopefully be mostly out of sight. I will do my best at that. And then the funny thing is there's actually cables coming out of this that run down the tubes and go into the pump block unit down here. You can see the wires coming out of the tubes and going into the pump block unit. And then there are two cables coming off of this. One being the RGB header, so you plug that into your motherboard for RGB control, and one is uh, your fan header. So you're plugging a single fan header into probably your CPU fan header, and that's actually providing power for the uh, pump as well as all three fans. All right, so I think uh, the system is pretty much assembled and put together, and uh, there were no major snags that I hit along the way. Just, uh, you know, there's always complications with AIOs and RGB, and uh, I managed to get through that okay. If you are gonna have a little rat's nest of cables, I guess uh, tucked up here in this corner is probably a good spot to have it because it is staying pretty much out of sight and out of mind, so that's good. Beyond that, I think the build's looking pretty clean overall. Uh, just a couple cables coming out of this central pump block unit here, and uh, you can tuck those away pretty well around the CPU socket, so that didn't turn out too bad either. This build could probably benefit from some sleeved extensions. I think that would finish the look off. But with the all black cables from the Fractal Ion Plus power supply, uh, we got the build together and it doesn't look bad by any stretch. And you know, we could always uh, upgrade that in the future if we wanted to. I feel like there's maybe a tiny bit of a GPU sag happening here. Not, nothing too terrible, but uh, that might be something if I was getting nitpicky on, I might come back and try to fix. And for the rear panel cable management, uh, there's, a, there's a quick look at it. Spent a little bit of time routing the cable cables down the side here, but uh, not a whole lot. I was mainly just tucking stuff out of the way where necessary and, and trying to pull back loose cables that might end up sticking out on the opposite side. And again, uh, plenty of room down there in the basement to tuck stuff away. I don't really feel like there's much benefit to that little cable cover thing there. So I'm just leaving that off for now. And the true test for cable management, of course, is how easily you can get the side panel back on. And, um, and that's how easily I got the side panel back on. So cool, let's, let's power this thing on and see if I actually built a functional system. A drum roll. We do have standby lights, so that's good. Look at that. It works. The RGB works. The fans work. The all one liquid cooler works. It's got a nice soft default sound to it. That's, that's one of the things I like about building a new system when you have decent quality fans that are included and you power it on for the first time, even if the fans ramp up pretty uh, to pretty high RPMs, if it still has just a nice gentle sound, it's like, all right, that's gonna be a nice system to use long-term as far as acoustics go. But there you have it, guys, uh, my build, uh, about a $2,000-ish build representing really close to the peak of what you can get out of a gaming PC right now with an RTX 3080 and a Ryzen 9 
X CPU. And yes, I know you guys are probably having a hard time finding those right now, but I hope it is at least some consolation that this system is going to be up for grabs at some time in the near future. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be doing an announcement within the next couple weeks letting you guys know how you can enter to win this system. I might have another giveaway uh, also in the works. There's a lot of giving away of stuff I think that's going to be happening towards the end of this year. So stay tuned. I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, leave me a comment on the way out if you did enjoy it. Let me know what you think of this build. If there's anything you'd swap out, swap in, what you would upgrade yourself if you happen to be the one who won this. And uh, also while you're down there in the video description area, check out the link to my store at paulsharbor.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and all sorts of other super sweet merchandise. It helps me out a lot and it gets you some super sweet merch. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.